Yo guys, what is up? If you enjoyed the video so far, hit that subscribe button, that would be also very helpful for me. And in today's video, we are going to talk about PvP knowledge. The topic will be divided in three different videos, Beginners, Advanced, Pro. In this video, we will start with the Beginners Guide. For the majority of the people, the knowledge that we will talk about is well known and I would recommend people watching this if they are totally new to the game. There could be some information that you might not know, even as an experienced PvP guy. So let's dive into the video. So if you start playing the game for the first time, you need to pick a class. This class will determine how you play in PvP. Each class has several subclasses that play also different. First we have the Titan. You can compare him with the tank role from other MMORPGs, but only in some aspects. Let's start with his jump. Although he seems to be the tank, his lift jump makes him very fast, not that mobile, but fast you could say. The next big topic would be his super. Supers on Titan are extremely recommended for beginners, because the majority of their supers has some kind of tracking, is easy to use, and he has a lot of health while in super. I could say now, okay, that super is the best, but I think this is a statement that everybody can make after playing trials or a long PvP control session, and I want you to give an advice that helps you to get used to the game. You need to understand that every subclass is in some terms better and other terms worse. I cannot go too deeply into that because otherwise only the picking a class part would take 30 minutes. For the beginning I would say middle tree solar, bottom tree striker and top tree sentinel are the go to to get used to the game without having the feeling of being totally lost with your super. To quickly discuss grenades, they are very good on titan. You can suppress for example other people with your grenade even if they are in their super. Also the melee is in my opinion the strongest out of all three classes. Base melee range can be so much more than other classes with the exotic Zintoceps or with bottom tree striker. The ability melee is even better, shiver strike or shoulder charge gives you very fast forward movement and one hits most of the time the opponent. Last topic would be the class ability. In this case the Titan can put up a barricade. You have towering barricade and rally barricade. I would go with the first one. It will give you such an advantage in PvP because you can see through and are still behind cover. The barricade is the best part about the Titan, although it's not that easy because the placement of it needs to be done properly to benefit from it. So to summarize here, Titans have incredible supers, their playstyle is very good for passive players but also for people who tend to rush with their shotgun. If I would compare him with a superhero for example, it would be just straight Superman because yeah, super strong but also very fast. I would recommend this class for beginners, although it has some aspects for more experienced players. Our next class would be the Hunter. You can compare him with the Ranger or Assassin from other MMORPGs. Very agile with high mobility and the opportunity to go invincible. We're gonna follow the same steps we did with the Titan. The Hunter Jump is by far the best for PvP. I did a video about Hunter movement a few months ago where I explained every movement aspect the Hunter has. So if you're interested in that, go check it out. Link will be in the description box. But for now, Hunter has two different jumps, I mean technically three, but high jump and strafe jump are somehow the same with just different movement directions. So there's double jump and triple jump. Triple jump is perfect for beginners, because if you fail the second jump, you still have a third jump to save yourself. Later on, double jump, in that case strafe jump, is the go-to for pro PvP players to be very fast, you could say. Let's move on to supers. I think Hunter has everything from low skilled instant super to high skilled roaming supers, so you can have a good time as a beginner because Hunter has everything. To start with, of course, stasis is on all three classes very good. 
but those subclasses change the logical in-game game knowledge and that's why I don't recommend them although they are beyond strong. If you want a nice super go for Spectral Blade and Arc Staff. With those you learn how to use roaming supers, you could also try Blade Barrage. It sometimes doesn't kill the enemy but it's mostly a one press button kill also called instant super so very easy to use. With grenades I think there is not much to say about although the smoke bomb and the void grenade in combination also called wombo combo could be a strong choice. I think grenades are good but not game changing. They can help but for beginners the focus is more on getting used to the movement and the gunplay so therefore I'm not going that much into detail about this today. Base melee range is pretty normal if you use arc staff or stasis it connects better for some reason. The charged melee can be a smoke bomb, a shuriken, a throwing knife or even an uppercut. Throwing knives can one hit people so they are pretty damn good but they require some experience. For beginners smoke bomb or the normal arc staff melee should be fine and yeah of course stasis shurikens are still easy to use. I mean the whole stasis stuff is very beginner friendly you could say. But uh, it's, it's very frustrating to play against so I wouldn't recommend it but it's beyond strong you could say. And now we get to the coolest class ability out of all classes, the dodge. While you are for example in the open field you can dodge and get behind cover. This will help you to get out of bad situations quickly. You can pick between two different dodges. Marksman's dodge reloads your equipped weapon and Gambler's dodge which has slightly more range and fills up your melee if you perform the dodge near enemies. Both very strong for PvP and for beginners the best go to if for example you forgot to reload your gun, simply dodge and there you go your weapon is reloaded and you can engage properly again. Also it is the only class that has an extra movement ability besides Stasis Titan or Dawnblade Warlock but those are only available on that specific subclass and are not usable for the whole class. So to round up, Hunter has phenomenal supers, insane jumps and a movement based class ability which makes him by far the best PvP class for beginners and also for advanced people. I see it like this, easy to play hard to master. The third and last class is the Warlock. He has aspects of a healer or a magician and he has some amazing cool abilities like charging grenades, blinking instead of jumping or Icarus dashing which is the most popular choice for extremely advanced people. His jump is some kind of glide mechanic which can be a little bit tricky to get used to. For PvP I would always recommend burst glide to make sure that you cover distances more easily. The second jump is called Blink and it's only usable on Void subclasses. It replaces your glide with a short Blink animation. If you want to know more about that, I did a video about Blink recently. The link will be in the description box down below. Superwise, the Warlock has everything to offer from a beginner friendly tracking Nova Bomb to an advanced Chaos Reach or for pro players we have Dawnblade or Stormcaller recently. From all three classes I would say Warlock has the strongest and the most individual grenades. Stormcrawler grenades with arc web can give your opponents a very hard time even against pro players. Consuming or converting your grenades can make your detonation radius higher, the ability to float longer or you get for example an arc show that shoots and follows you all the time. Next up the base melee range for Warlocks is yeah the, the worst you could say out of all three classes but the ability melees are very strong. For example a tracking melee that you can throw on top tree solar. The class ability is very supportive, you place down a rift that either heals yourself and allies or buffs your weapon damage for you and your allies. Of course only if you stay inside the rift. The healing rift can be insanely good for recovering more often. For example, you're having an engagement on this corner here, you get hit twice, you place down a rift to heal you and now you can engage properly with full health. Even if you get hit twice again, you can still back up into the rift and heal yourself again and engage properly. Rifts in general are very strong for primary gunfights or team shots. The empowering rift makes team shots even more easily because you can two tap with a 120 hand cannon or you could body shot someone with an aggressive frame sniper. 
The last topic I want to cover is Icarus Dash. Icarus Dash might be the strongest ability for PvP, but you can only use it on top 3 solar. It's kinda like a dodge from Hunter, but you can only activate it while in air. This and the fact that you can combine it with your jump makes you the fastest person on the map while also having good mobility. You can use this ability twice each 5 seconds. So if you use it twice you have a 5 second cooldown which is very low you could say so you can use that Icarus Dash a lot. I would say if you know how to play this class you can be one of the best players although its speed is tied to skill somehow. On PC maybe not because of macros but on console it requires some game knowledge and button timing to get used to the um, yeah, jumping and Icarus Dashing at the same time will speed you up and if you mess up the timing, yeah, you don't get the speed. Quick roundup here, Warlocks have nice super, insane grenades as abilities and are super supportive with the Rift. Now we get to the part where you hear a lot about all three classes and need to pick one. In my opinion, the Titan and Hunter are the best option for starting the game. Titan has the best melee as well as supers, while Hunter can shine with their class abilities and their jumps. Of course you can choose whatever you want, but Warlock is a little bit trickier than the other classes, but it can be the best class if you know how to play it. After you pick the class, you need to decide on what sensitivity you want to play. For the beginning, if you want to get better at aiming, 3 or 4 is good, and if you want to be fast, you could go for 7 or 8, or even 10. Best example here is that people who snipe play on low sensitivity and shotgun apes tend to play on high sensitivity. Of course, this is only for console. Before we dive into any special tactics, this will be more likely in the advanced guide, we need to look at guns. Every season we get sandbox updates, that changes the weapons a little bit. So if a gun was good one year ago, it could be possible that right now it's just garbage. With that being said, this season we have 120 hand cannons, shotgun, bastion, last words and some snipers that are currently the most used weapons. What does that mean for you? Actually not that much, you could use those guns but in the beginning it's not that important that you use guns that everybody uses right now. As a recommendation I would always pick a shotgun to start with and here's why. The game is a movement based game so if you want to learn how to play you need to move a lot. Shotguns are first easy to use, but also require you to move fast. When you start with a sniper, your aim might be getting better, but it could happen that your movement is not evolving as good as with a shotgun. After you mastered some movement with your shotgun, you can switch to any gun you want. Also you need a primary with your shotgun. Keep in mind that you have both guns. Your loadout should always be one gun for close range and another gun for long range. You could go with Sidearm and Scout for example, or SMG with a Pulse. With a shotgun you could use 120s or any hand cannon, but it can be sometimes hard to get used to it. My personal favorite would be the Chroma Rush. It says 720 rounds per minute auto rifle, which has good time to kill, and you will get used to the recoil flinch and all that stuff easily, because auto rifles are the best guns to get a first gun feeling. Chroma Rush you can get from the new seasonal activity or from focused Umbral Engrams, the black ones. But you need the season pass of course. Any other AR could also do the job, so if you don't have Chroma Rush, a 450 rounds per minute or even a 600 rounds per minute AR can be good to start with. The last part we need to talk about is exotics. You might not have a lot if you just started the game. Xur gives you the opportunity to buy exotics for a few legendary shards. He is each week somewhere else and he spawns each Friday the same time when Trials goes live. You can find him in the app or watch a video from for example Houndish on where he is and what his inventory has. With that being said we go through all exotics that matter in PvP and help you to improve with them. Of course I'm not going over all the exotics, I've just picked those that I think have the most impact on your PvP experience. The weapon choice is already covered earlier but I could say that Crimson, Jade Rabbit, Sturm, Last Word, Bastion, Witherward, Chaperone, Deadman's Tale, Telesto and Yotun are just fire. But I still believe the weapon choice is more relevant for you in the future and getting used to the gun feeling recoil and all that stuff is far more important. 
Exotic armor on the other hand is very important in my opinion. Titan has 5 interesting exotics I would like to show you. One Night Mask, Sintel Zaps, Sitten's Ramparts, Dune Marchers and the Path of Burning Steps. One Night Mask gives you an overshield if you win your one on one engagement. The opponent must at least shot you once so that the perk can be activated. Sintel Zaps help your Guardian with an increased melee lunge range and does more melee and super damage while surrounded. Sitten's Ramparts gives you and your allies the ability to shoot through your towering barricade. Dune Marches buffs your sprint speed and also has a special second trait. Sprinting builds up a static charge which will be released on enemies after you hit a melee attack on someone. In the current meta this is very powerful because it has such an insane chain radius. Last but not least we have the Path of Burning Steps which is the stasis counter because you're harder to slow down or to refreeze and even if someone does it to you, you will get out more quickly than normal while getting a 10 second buff that gives you more damage. You can 2 tap with a 120 or body shot with an aggressive frame sniper. If I need to pick one in the current meta I would choose the last one but it depends on how many people play stasis in the opponent team. If nobody plays stasis doom marches would be my next go too. For the hunter there are many good exotics. I'm only picking the one that have the highest potential. The following 6 are Wormheart's Crown, Shinobi's Vow, Dragon Shadow, Mask of Bakris, Six Coyote and Stompies. Wormhorse Crown has the trait that if you dodge you get a small portion of your health back which can be helpful in so many situations. Imagine being low health then dodging on top 3 Night Stalker. You're invincible and your health is more now so you could engage again and even surprise your opponent by that play. Shinobi's Vow improves your skip grenades and you gain an additional skip grenade but it also refills your grenade if you damage enemies. Of course this is only usable if you use arc subclass with skip nades. Dragon Shadow is the go to for most people, dodging reloads all your guns and increase movement and weapon handling speed for a brief time. So you can use Gambler's Dodge and it will reload your guns while having insane weapon swap speed which is totally worth it. Musk of Bakras replaces your stasis subclass dodge ability with a longer range faster moving shift. This can be really helpful to get out of bad situations or to surprise people with an extreme push. My favorite exotic for the hunter is the 6 coyote. You simply get a second dodge which is so powerful but nobody is aware of it and it's completely underrated in my opinion. Zombies buff your sprint speed, your slide distance and your jump height which makes this exotic the best movement tool that is currently available. Also because of the fact that Hunt seems to be a bit slowly compared to the other classes, people overuse Stompies to be able to keep up with the speed of other classes. Let's now take a look at the Warlock exotics. We have Karnstein Armlets, Astrocyte Verse, Ophelian Aspect, Getaway Artist, Necrotic Grip and Transversive Steps. Karnstein Armlets restore your health if you get a melee kill. That combined with the top 3 solar melee can be very powerful, same for the necrotic grip. It gives your melee additional poison damage so that your guardian loses like 75% of their health with celestial fire and with the middle tree void subclass this can even one hit people if your ability melee is charged. Astrocyte verse is for our blink people, it simply makes you blink further and more frequently while weapon ready speed is increased when coming out of blink and also radar stays up. Ophidian Aspect makes the general performance of your gameplay better, weapon have better ADS speed, switch faster, reload more quickly and it gives you an extended melee range. If you are unsecure which exotic you should pick on Warlock, this is the go to. Getaway Artist is totally underrated, you can consume your grenade to get a better version of the normal arc show that stays with you for 10 seconds. So super supportive for 140 or 180 hand cannons for example. Last one would be the transversive steps. This is the go-to for most pro players and trials players because you get an increase in sprint speed and also after short time sprinting your currently equipped weapon is automatically reloaded. So we are finished with this part. As you might notice there is a lot to talk about. I hope this will help you to get into Destiny 2 PvP 
And if this video does well, we're gonna follow up with the advanced guide and the pro guide, which covers up more positioning, button layout, callouts, and all that stuff, like for example, a quick draw glitch, everything that advanced and pro players do. Of course, there are things that I didn't touch in this video because I only wanted to give you the best information as quickly as possible. So if you think I missed something, feel free to comment down below. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to see more PvP related content, either for straight gameplay or for PvP advice, hit that subscribe button and we will see us in the next video. Ciao!